It is Wednesday morning in South Korea as we get ready for another day of Olympic battles with uh, one American superstar in action and of course new heroes waiting to emerge that we really haven't even met yet. Great to have you back with us tonight for the Olympic Zone. Yeah, tonight we're celebrating an American gold rush and uh, looking to head to some really big events. And learning more about South Korea, the food, the hot souvenirs, all that neat stuff that <laughs> we really like in TV. But up first, let's check out the medal counts. Norway is in the lead with 11 total medals. The Netherlands and our neighbors in Canada are tied for second. Germany has the most gold. The U.S. is in fifth. And Team USA added another gold overnight thanks to an exuberant teenager from California. Two 1080s. Let's see the second, Chloe. Comes around back to back 1080s. Front side 900. Chloe Kim, gold medal already around her neck, but she wants an even bigger score. Yeah, a lot of people fell in love with this girl, and she lived up to the high of 17 year old. Chloe Kim did go bigger and better, taking 98 point. 25 points out of 100. She won the half pipe gold more than eight points ahead of the <laughs> silver medalist, while aerial gold of the U.S. took the bronze. In the end, Chloe was competing to be her very best. Going into my third round, I knew that um, I was taking home the gold, but which was a very insane feeling that I can't even explain right now. But um, I just knew that I wasn't going to be completely satisfied taking home the gold and knowing I could could have done better. That was great. In women's hockey, U.S. women easily breezed past the athletes from Russia 5-0. Jocelyn Lamoureux Davidson scored there in the second period to make it 2-0. Six seconds later, off the faceoff, she does it again. The fastest back-to-back -back goals in Olympic history, men or women. A heavyweight match with Canada is next. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Great. yeah. Figure skating returns tonight with the pairs competition. Chris Kinnaram and his wife, Alexa Schmecka Kinnaram, uh, will represent Team USA this evening. Yeah, they are the first marriage pair from the U.S. to make a skating team since 1998 yeah. and they're facing some tough competition. Sure are. Well, look who's here. Our own Olympic expert <laughs> yeah. has has skated on beautifully to the uh, <laughs> stage. Meryl Davis is here. Uh, let's talk about the American Cup a little bit. Uh, they had a real difficult time getting. Give us a little of their background on and what we can expect tonight. They did, but well, I was impressed with your pronunciation. Yeah, that was really good. You nailed it. Five times fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> um, I think they did such an incredible job in the team event. This is a team that, um, you know, doesn't necessarily have a shot at an Olympic medal outside of the team event. And yeah. so it's such an incredible opportunity for them to stand on an Olympic podium. What a memory for them. And I've heard them say coming out of the U.S. championships, being assigned to the U.S. team at these Olympic Games, their goal is to enjoy being Olympians. It's yeah. to represent the U.S. to the best of their ability. Um, they're incredible. They have just an incredible story. But um, being in the medal hunt in the individual event isn't really what they're going for here. I'm fascinated by the difference between the pairs world and the ice dancing world. Yes. Uh, I wonder, first off, at how those two, how you look at each other in those disciplines. But also, the U.S. does so well in ice dancing. It's been a long time since we've had a pairs uh, couple that's been able to succeed. It has. I mean, ice dancing has had a slow and steady rise and growth in the last probably four Olympic cycles. Um, and then I think that's something that the Paris discipline in the U.S. is definitely looking to do. Mm. Um, I think it comes down to so many factors. Um, there's so much talent in the Paris discipline. They work so hard, but it's it's something that just takes a long time to get going. And yeah. um, there's a lot Clearly. of promise there for yeah. sure. The Russians are a big deal in, in this event. And do you think that it's a little bit awkward because they're not participating under their own flag right now? Yeah, I mean, so the Russian, Russia has won the Paris discipline, or they had won the Paris discipline every Olympic Games between 1964 oh, and 2006. Wow. Every Olympic That's Games. That's a big deal. Um, yeah. And then they won in 2014 as well. And so um, they have just a, a vast history of success in the mm -hmm. Paris discipline. and. Um, I, to answer your second question, it's awkward is definitely one word for it. Yeah. I, I think it's um, there's there's a lot left to interpretation there. I yeah. think there's a lot of mystery involved. Um, you know, we know that it's a state-sanctioned doping scandal that a lot of people have heard quite a bit about, and. It's a difficult situation to know what the right thing to do is. Right. You know, of course, there needs to be some sort of accountability. Um, a state sanctioned doping scandal is a huge problem. And yet I think there are a lot of athletes who are clean, who have been clean, yeah. 
who may not have necessarily had anything to do with this scandal. And so while, of course, we do want accountability, it's kind of heartbreaking for the athletes who had no involvement in this in this scandal because they're being punished yeah. too. Art, we'll see how it weird, all. Weird diplomacy we, for athletes. Do we have 10 seconds? I just want to ask quickly, if, if they're pair skaters and they're married and they have a spat at home, what happens when they get to the audience? <laughs> oh, have that's you ever seen that? Yeah. Well, you should look back at uh, <laughs> there are some videos. Um, in, in previous Olympic games, there are, there are quite a few videos to look up there. Oh, so it does. It's <laughs> icy in other ways. There you yes. go. Right, yeah, there you exactly. go. All right, if you have questions for Meryl, you can post them and click on Detroit.com slash Ask Meryl. She'll answer online. And you might even see some of your questions on TV here. Because you can so. see, we have plenty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these winter games creating some very young champions. A path to success Michaela Schifrin knows very well. She won the Olympic gold in the slalom. She was 18 years old. That early success has created, though, new anxiety. Dan Hicks looks at how Schifrin is trying to overcome fears that literally made her sick to her stomach. Ich hätte, du hättest, hättest. Practice. Michaela Schifrin does a lot of it. <laughs> I did. I did too, sorry. Today, it's German lessons with her mother and coach, Eileen. It's a scene that would be familiar in many homes. It's just that this kitchen is adorned with five Crystal Globe trophies that belong to the world's best ski racer. Michaela Schifrin has always known where she wants to go. At 17, she became the youngest American woman ever to win a world championship. She won Olympic gold in slalom at 18, and last year took the overall World Cup title. The steep trajectory of her success has been interrupted only by fleeting fits of nerves. At several events last season, she became nauseous in the start house, just minutes before a race. Anxiety for me have started creeping in more and more because I'm starting to realize how important it is to me to be the best ski racer in the world. And also there's a very good chance that somebody else just put in an ounce more effort and they might be the reason that I never see that dream. She began seeing a sports psychologist who introduced her to a simple affirmation that Michaela wrote in marker on her gloves, I am. She helped me realize some things about how I shouldn't pay attention to what other people's expectations are of me, but more pay attention to the things that I feel, just saying I am good, I am strong, and I want it. Schifrin hasn't been shy about saying what she wants, like this press conference, just hours after winning her first Olympic medal. Right now I'm dreaming of, you know, the next Olympics winning five gold medals, which Sounds really crazy. That was the most truthful thing I could have possibly said. One of the things I want people to take away from me or my career is to stop shying away from their ambition and to actually face it head on and work towards it. Because too many people just say, no, that's, that sounds crazy. I couldn't even do that. And then they stop. And what's the point of that? All right, well, still ahead, Olympic memories for sale. See what tourists are taking home from South Korea. A quick shopping spree when we come back. It's It is almost impossible to go to an event like the Winter Olympics without grabbing a souvenir or a memento of some kind. In fact, I'm going to show you something that I brought home from my trip to uh, Seoul and Pyeongchang in a minute. But first, NBC's Natalie Morales shows us some of the hottest items at the Games this time around. Hey there! Hey! I'm How Natalie! You? I'm Ken. Ken Hanscom has been collecting Olympic memorabilia since London 2012. The five ring enthusiast works for a ticketing management company used by NBC Universal, and he started looking for Pyeongchang goodies back in October of 2017. So what's the merch that I need to get here? Well, I think you really need to look for the North Face stuff, first and foremost. You're foremost. wearing? Yep, absolutely. And then I think coffee mugs and tumblers. And what about pricing? What can I expect? Well, pricing is actually very reasonable uh, at really? this Olympics, more so than past Olympics. So we can find bargains we here, can. too. More reason to shop. Let's yep. go. I love my job. As soon as we walked in, I found something I liked. Oh, I like this shirt. These are cute. You might want to try one of those. Yeah. <laughs> it looks good. 
So this entire section yeah. was full of coffee mugs just three days ago. Oh, wow. All the logo apparel goes first and yeah. the logo mugs. And then what happens is a lot of the individual sports ones are the ones that go a little bit later. These will eventually be sold out as well. That's cool. Mascots are really popular. The thing about them is they won't sell out right away. And the reason for that is they've been around for basically a year. Uh -huh. And so a lot of folks in South Korea have already bought them for their kids or whatnot. Right. So mainly people buying them here are going to be people that are visiting. The banknotes as well as these coins um, oh are, are currently sold, sold out. That's the type of thing that may end up on a store like eBay. One thing I would never post on eBay. My favorite thing in the whole store is this, the curling pillow. Because you need to have a curling, curling pillow, pillow, right? All right, I think I'm good. Got everything. I'm maxed out. <laughs> My total haul, six items for $196.51. Not bad for this shopaholic. <laughs> I dig the curling pillow. Not but that bad. was all, of course, Olympic swag. It, we also want to get out in real stores. Um, you guys know my wife, Corey, is a ceramic artist, so we tend to gravitate towards yes. ceramics. And this is a porcelain piece uh, that I found in a little gallery in Seoul. And the ceramic uh, tradition in Korea goes back centuries, of mm -hmm. course. And this is by a Korean artist, and I just absolutely love it. It's an it. interesting it's, shape. Yeah, very very odd little thing. It was mm -hmm. kind of spunky to get home. Is that, I just think it's gorgeous. Is that Brooklyn on the front? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this, no? A little street, street in, action. in Seoul. It's, it's, yeah. city. It's, a, it's probably it's any city USA or in the world, I would guess, <laughs> right? Very nice. But it's beautiful and, yeah. and, a, and a great souvenir. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Very, very treasure. Cool. Yeah. All right, still ahead, we have a tourism alert. While the world is watching the Olympics, we'll show you what else you can see in South Korea. And you can see it without leaving your house. That's next. Tomorrow. The Olympic Zone, brought to you by Royal Caribbean. This is not the Caribbean. This is the Royal Caribbean. Come seek. All of us have had our eyes, of course, on the ski slopes and the ice rinks of Pyeongchang, but there is so much more to see. Uh, take a look at one of the spots that we found when we were in South Korea. A little less than an hour outside Pyeongchang, we found this beautiful Buddhist temple tucked up into the mountains in this snowy forest, and it was just, it was breathtakingly cold that day, but just so beautifully peaceful and tranquil. Uh, it ended up being one of our favorite stops. Uh, of our a uh, little more than a week uh, in Korea. It's absolutely beautiful. NBC's Dylan Dreyer also took a break from the Olympic action to take a look at some of the other amazing sights in Korea. World-class competition may be the main draw here these days, but visitors to Pyeongchang quickly discover this region's greatest asset is its natural beauty. Hidden beneath the Baekwun Mountains, a mysterious treasure waiting to be discovered. Now this is the outfit I was looking for. Wow, this is becoming quite the adventure. This water is crystal clear. <laughs> so this is Baekyong Cave. It means white dragon. And there's a bat on the door, so why not? Shortly after entering the cave, I realized this is not for the faint of heart. Tight is an understatement. Glad I'm small. But the payoff is worth it. Oh, wow. Are there any animals that live in the caves? There are 56 different animals and insects, such as bats. I saw 10 of them while we were walking in. 10 bats? Yeah. I didn't know that. Isn't it cute? Come closer and take a look. Turns out we were surrounded. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's... Next stop, Pyeongchang's annual trout festival. Come on, come on, come on, here it comes. Yay! I got one. Now what? I got dinner. All right, we've moved down to the coast to the Aranabi zip line, and I am very nervous. It's a big drop. You sure this is enough? I don't even like bridges. Oh, I don't want to. Are you pushed? Are you okay? Okay. Oh, yay! We didn't get to do that. <laughs> no. That looks like good time. Or ice fishing. Or ice fishing. Didn't do that either. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll still ahead. Bernie heads back into the kitchen for some soul food, as in something tasty from South Korea food. That's, That's coming up next.
it's sweet. Hello, everyone. Mike Tirico at the International Broadcast Center. Tonight in primetime, on the ice of figure skating, the pairs competition gets underway with the short program. That and more coming up tonight in primetime. Now, of course, every two years during the Olympics, we send Bernie to get a taste of the host country's cuisine. And believe it or not, this year, a local family let him loose inside their <laughs> kitchen. That's correct. What were they thinking? What were, what they, were they thinking? thinking? So tonight we try to answer the question, does this guy really get a paycheck for this? <laughs> All right, again, we are here in Chesterfield Township, and this is Sun. Ooh, ooh she's great. Look at this. Thank you. Korean slippers. Can't come into this house without slippers or socks, right? Oh, right. If you had a hole, you can wear shoes. See, if I had a hole. Who in the socks? So we're making Korean barbecue. Come on over here, show me what we're doing. We're turning this on. Too high? Too high. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, medium heat. Very good. Okay. I'm not very good at this, but go ahead. This is called purgogi. This, this is, is Barbara. Uh, yes. Meat. Yeah, that's good. Beef. Beef. What kind of beef? Beef. It, this is uh, ribeye. Ribeye. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, you think I could? You marinate it. <laughs> yes. You marinate. Yes. What do you marinate in? This is soy sauce. Soy sesame sauce. Oil, sesame seeds. Sesame seeds. Sesame seeds. Uh, garlic Girl. and a little bit of uh, ginger sugar. juice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then sugar. Sugar. Then you cook it all. How long you cook for? Well, you have to <laughs> marinate it. Wait for the three days. How many? Three days. Yes. Well, what, what if you're hungry right away for it? Well, then you have to run into the restaurant. Uh, <laughs> and so this you cook, and then you leave that. I mean, after you cook it, and this is your finished product over here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is beautiful. And you dip it in the sauces. No, no, it's already in there. All, oh, it's already it's in. All marinated. So you know, I'm terrible at this, but I'll see if I can get this. Get the bottom part. Bottom part. It's dry. Well, you do good at the hey, Look at that. Oh my God, that is great. Come here. You guys, are, you guys are coming back to the real world out of here. With yeah, us. Come what, on. What are your paycheck? <laughs> paycheck? <laughs> with her paycheck. <laughs> That's what she said. What a, nice. But what a character. Yeah, unbelievable. Totally. She was great. And great. every time, each piece we do, she could, she's, better, by better. next week, I'm telling you, she's going to have a half hour show. She'll be opening her own restaurant. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure, but that looked delicious. Yeah, it was great and prepared beautifully. And uh, Glad was, they didn't make you wait three days. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Couldn't wait three minutes. You've got to be prepared if you want it. That's for sure. All right, still ahead. The video in tonight's Candid Korea has gone viral. We'll show you <laughs> next. It's pretty great. Now let's take a look at the temperature in the Pyeongchang region. The current temperature in Pyeongchang is brought to you by the Nest Learning Thermostat. Because everyone likes easy. Sure do. Because everyone is on the go. Because we all like to save energy, but sometimes we slip up. Reaching up. Because sometimes we want it cool at night, then toasty in the mornings. Introducing the easy to use, energy saving, adjustable from everywhere, easy on the wallet and the eyes, Nest Thermostat E. E is for everyone. For Welcome back. Some of the most candid moments from Korea are going viral. Wait until you see this video from a shopping mall and don't try this at your local shopping mall. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Swiss freestyle skier Fabian Bosch had some time to kill with a South Korean mall, so why not try this? The old one arm up the elevator trick. I can think of a few good reasons not to try this. <laughs> <laughs> but if you would expect it perhaps to jump down here or something. No, it just scrambles right up and over the rail. It's incredible. Yeah, in a weird way. He skied he skied it. down. He did <laughs> That's right. <laughs> By the way, I got to remind you, 7.30 tomorrow, we'll see you again here on the Ozone. Uh, pull up a chair, maybe some uh, Korean barbecue squid or, chips yeah, is what right. we found yeah. a lot there while we were there. <laughs> Enjoy the live Olympic action coming up right here on Local Forum. We'll be back around 11.30 to uh, get you the day's news and weather. Have a good night.